This short presentation shows how to buttonhole a fistula. It is a mixture of two different patients. Patients are encouraged to wash their hands well and also wash their fistula. This patient has aneurysms on his fistula which are caused by bad needling and doing area puncture. If you are going to buttonhole, you shouldn't buttonhole or even needle into this. He has got plenty of other places up his arm that could be needled and you should never needle directly into an aneurysm. If you are going to buttonhole, then buttonhole away from the aneurysm. And if there isn't anywhere else to go and you have to do it, then you can needle right underneath the aneurysm here so that the end of the needle goes underneath the aneurysm, but don't ever needle directly into an aneurysm. Collect all your equipment together on a sterile field. The fistula should be cleaned for 30 seconds using the cleaning solution used by your hospital. This patient is using betadine we also use chloroprep freps, which you break like this, and this other patient is using these. Fistulas should be cleaned for 30 seconds and allowed to dry for 30 seconds. This is a buttonhole needle. It has a scab picker on the end of the needle, which fits onto the needle cover to make it a bit easier to hold. This patient is picking the scabs off his fistula. You must make sure that you get all of the scab off so you don't push any part of the scab into the buttonhole tract. When picking the scabs, you should use a scraping method. Don't dig. After picking the scab off, you should clean the fistula for 30 seconds and allow it to dry for 30 seconds again. The two patients on this film are both needling themselves under my supervision. They found good places to needle and are introducing sharp needles into the same tract as before. We find that if patients needle themselves, then they needle at a good angle and make a good tract that they can easily use themselves. If the patient can't self-needle, then you should use the same member of staff to form the buttonhole tract. Once the needle is in the fistula, it should be flushed and the next needle inserted. Needles should be inserted at an angle of no more than 30 degrees. This depends on the depth of the fistula, but most fistulas are not so deep that they need a steeper angle. If you needle at a steeper angle than this, you will tend to go through the opposite side of the fistula and blow the fistula. You should be careful not to push the needles right up to the hub, otherwise you will get a little ridge forming around the edge of the buttonhole. This is commonly called hubbing, so you should be careful not to push the needle to the end to avoid this. You will find that you need to use sharp needles six to eight times before swapping to blunt needles. After flushing the venous needle, we always leave the syringe connected to the needle just so the patient doesn't connect up the wrong way around. You will notice on this video that one of our patients uses a tourniquet. When the buttonhole tract is formed, you will not really need to use a tourniquet. Once you feel that the track has formed well enough and the needles are going in well, you can swap to blunt needles. When needling with a blunt needle, you should hold the needle by the tubing and not by the wings and should twiddle the needle into the tract. You will notice when this man can't first find the tract, he pulls the needle back until he finds the tract. As the tract gets better, he will find that the needles go much more easily into the tract.
If you find you can't get the needle into the track and you take it all the way out, you must never reinsert the same needle into the track because you will introduce particles that may cause infection. When the needles are in the fistula, they must be taped securely. We normally use butterfly taping like this.